How's it going guys? Welcome to this extended video in which we are going to be downloading and installing RS Logix 500, RS Logix 500 emulate as well as RS Links, all the tools that you need in order to get started in PLC programming. And I've made a video a while ago which shows you the exact steps, but a few of you, of you had problems essentially downloading the right software so i wanted to do everything from the beginning i'm going to create all of the accounts and we're going to look at any problems which arise that way you can have the full view and be able to install the software so without any further delay let's get started before we get started with today's video we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the solus plc youtube channel and this includes industrial automation plc programming as well as hmi development and if you enjoy this type of content we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel so the first step we're going to do is essentially on a blank machine. This is a machine that I have in TeamViewer and I'm setting this up on a home server. Server, And essentially there's nothing installed. So I'm just going to type in to Google RS. Uh, I'm going to go into Rockwell Download Center. I'm going to type that in as is Download Center. From here, you will notice there's going to be a couple of different links. You can either go through the Download Center, but ultimately you want to end up in the product compatibility and download center from Rockwell Automation. And this will be a page which looks exactly like this. I'm just going to enlarge that to make it easier. Here you will have a search bar in which you need to type in exactly what we're looking for. And this is going to be RS Logics. So RS Logics Micro. And from the menu, you'll notice there's going to be a couple of different things, but the free version is going to be the starter light. Starter light is going to be the, sorry, uh, starter light. And from the starter light, we want to get the English version, which uh, we're going to click right here. And this should bring up the next step. So here there's going to be a way to download and essentially add to cart. We're going to select on this download. I'm just going to click that icon and from the menu here you don't necessarily want to download this top level tier what you do need to do is click on this little plus and scroll all the way down until you find this version 11 and hit this little download icon because some of the newer versions are essentially just the rs logics link but we do want the three tools that i've mentioned so once you click that you'll have a pop-up which tells you exactly what you need to download and there's going to be different files but we're looking for three specific softwares make sure that you select the three of them so first of all we want the rs logics micro starter light without rs links in english next you want the rs logics emulate 500 version 6 and last but not least we want the rs links classic light for micrologics so three different files the rs logics we want the rs logics emulate and then we want the rs links classic light the button that we need to click in order to download those packages is going to be the downloads three we have the three packages selected make sure that you do get those three in your cart if you have less than that then you've missed a previous step from here we can click download now and once you click download you will need to sign in to your rockwell automation account and we're going to create this from scratch as i've mentioned we're not going to skip any steps so if you have an account you do sign in if we don't have an account click on this create an account button and creating an account is very straightforward you need to create an email address and we're going to do that as well so open a new tab in your browser type in gmail and you can write new account or you can just go to Gmail and click on create a new account, create a Gmail account. Here you will need to, of course, click on this large red button and you'll need to enter your name. So Vlad Roman and let's say V Roman. So let's just make it Solus. You'll see. Uh, let's try at gmail.com and give yourself a password. Let's see if we can get that created click next so this is already taken i've already um i've already created this so let's put in for example 89 and then give it another password which we need essentially to make a little bit more robust from a google standpoint let's try that 
Okay, looks pretty good. So phone number is optional. We don't this is also optional. Let's put in my just a dummy birthday. May 15, 1989. Perfect gender. Let's select our gender next. Agree to all the terms. Scroll all the way down. I agree. And I just want to, like I said, it's a, it's an obvious process for some of you, but I want to make sure that you understand what is happening because a lot of you had questions. So here's all of your accounts from the top right corner. I believe we can go to Gmail. So here, if you select this little dotted uh, shortcut, we can go into Gmail and we have our account. So it's solusplc89 at gmail.com. And let's just give it a second to connect. So here is our new Gmail account. We can go back to Rockwell while that is being created. So we're going to enter our information. So solusplc89 at gmail.com. Make sure you enter your own address, of course. We click on continue. Are you sure you want to use this email? Uh, yes, we are sure because that's we don't have a corporate account. This is not a problem. Let's see, Vlad, Roman, country, Canada. Let's just select it from the drop down. It seems like it's good. Let's just select US. It doesn't really matter from a download perspective. Now, this is optional. As you can see, you can just skip this and create a password. We do need a lower and uppercase character, so I'm just going to redo that. Okay, perfect. We do need to agree to the terms of Rockwell Automation, create an account. And within a few seconds, hopefully we don't need to recheck everything let's see i'm just going to minimize this a little bit because i can't see the bar underneath i'm going to go back into my email address actually let's re-maximize this and i do want to cancel out of this so let's click ok click ok and verify the rockwell automation account verify my email address And once the okay, perfect. So account is verified, we can now sign in. So here we're going to type in the same information that we've created gmail.com password. Keep me signed in just uh, check that if you want to be logged into the we can save this as well on Google. That's perfectly fine. And update, we don't need to update this. That's fine. Uh, so it looks like we, like we do need to update in order to be able to download stuff. So let's uh, let's go back. We're going to update this company name. What if we just save? I guess these are all required. You can give this. We can give this just uh, random values. This doesn't need to be uh, anything specific. And then we can select um, whatever you need. I mean, you should probably give this legitimate information if you want to stay updated with Rockwell. But once again, I'm just showing you how to do this on a random account. We're creating something that's not going to be used in the long run. Of course, I have the address and everything specified correctly in the other one. Let's see if we can refresh the page in order to access those software downloads and see what um, what happens. Okay. So it looks like the page definitely came up. So I've just refreshed that um, that page and we should be able to accept here. We're going to accept the terms and conditions of downloading that software. Here you'll have two different options. You can do the managed route or you can do a direct download. I recommend uh, managed in certain cases if you're downloading from a company computer, but direct download is okay for our purposes and application. So you will notice that you have three different packages. You need to download them one by one. So first of all, I'm going to click on this emulate and I'm going to hit save. So it does go into the downloads folder automatically. In some cases, it will prompt you to save it somewhere. I'm going to click on this micro light. And then last but not least, I'm going to click on this RS links light. 
which are going to be the three software packages. So notice at the bottom of my screen in my internet browser, I have three different packages downloading. If I click on this little arrow and show them in the folder, once everything is completed, we will have three packages. And let's, um, let's just give this a minute so that we can um, so that we can focus on this instead of waiting for the download. And actually, I'm going to skip this RS uh, link slide. It looks like it's going to take about five minutes to download. So let's just fast forward through the video so that you can not have to watch this long download. And I will be back in just a second without skipping any other steps. All right, so we are back. Everything has been downloaded. As you can see, I have three packages within the downloads folder. And those are going to be once again RS Logix Emulate, Micro Lite, as well as RS Lynx Lite. So we're going to unzip the three of these. I'm just going to right click the first one. And I'm going to, let's see here, right click this once again. And I'm going to extract here. Let me just find this. Uh, I believe we can just open. Okay, so now we can use WinRAR in order to extract the packages. So I'm just going to leave that in the download section. I'm going to hit extract. And we should get the RS Lynx Lite folder started. We're going to have to do the same routine with the other two. So I'm just going to spare you the time looking at this progress bar. And I'm going to be back once the three of them have been extracted. And we have the three folders within our download section. All right, so here are the three folders that we got from those softwares. As you can see, the micro light is still a compressed folder. So we need to right click on this and then extract all. And we're going to extract it right there. That's fine. Extract all. And then we're going to go back into the downloads. So now we have essentially four archive folders, but one of them is a compressed one. So we're going to use the three non-compressed ones. So let's start with MicroLite. There is a sense to uh, installing these. Essentially, the RS Logix Emulate is going to give you an error if you install it first. So we're going to start with MicroLite. This is supposed to install our RS Logix. 500 tools. So I've just double clicked the setup. We can actually close the browser at this point. We don't need it any longer. So let's just cross out of there. And I am getting, of course, a little bit of a latency delay because this is a remote desktop. So there is some connectivity and essentially networking issues that you are seeing. All right. So I apologize about that. For whatever reason, I lost the network connection to this remote computer. So we are still in the download section and we're going to start by installing micro uh, light. And this is going to be the setup that we're going to run. It's going to be the only file within that folder. We are going to allow this app to make changes to this computer. I'm going to select yes. And like I've mentioned, one thing to watch out for is if you try to install emulate, you are first, you're going to get an error, which is going to tell you essentially that you need to install RS logics as well as RS links before you begin. So that being said, we are going to install RS links, uh, RS logics first. So I'm going to hit next. I'm going to accept the terms and conditions. Click next. I'm going to just give it a username. So Vlad R, for example, organization can be skipped. Click next, complete, install. And that's going to install fairly fast. There's not a whole lot to RS Logix Micro. So let's just wait for that process to complete. And we don't want to open this file. That's just going to be a um, essentially a manual on how to work with it. So we're going to click finish and that should be okay. Let's reopen back up the download section. So I'm going to click on this little icon, go back into the downloads as you can see. And from here, we can start installing RS links. So double click on RS links. And here we are going to run this setup application. Once again, click yes. Since we know it is a trusted source, we're going to select the required steps. And it says install a whole bunch of these different. Um, let's see here. We already have the Microsoft Internet Explorer as part of the package of Windows. So the only thing we're really going to install is going to be this RS links classic. So I'm going to select this number three. And this should launch the application and you are going to install those drivers which are needed for the application to run. So let's see if it's going to be able to find the required files. Usually it's able to this is a Windows 10 based machine. So it is going to download the .NET frameworks that are needed in order to run a lot of these files, make sure that you allow it to find whatever it requires to run these tools. 
And then we're just going to let this finish. I might skip the time depending on how long it takes. And next we're going to install a VRS Logix Emulate. But while we wait on this, we can start looking at if we do have a VRS Logix installed. So as you can see, if I type in RS Logix, Micro English shows up and we can run the software. The other thing that we're going to also double check is our network setup. So let's see network view network connections. So I do want to connect to a live PLC. And I also want to allow you in a next video to connect to an emulator. So both are equally as important. So if I go into my Ethernet connections, I will have a driver which is plugged into an, an existing PLC. Here in properties, I'm going to double click this IP version four. And you will notice that I have a static IP address, which is part of the network set up to be talking to my PLC. So I'm going to show you in a second where this is important, because essentially you need to have the same subnet as your PLC in order to be able to communicate to it directly. And it looks like the downloading files are finishing up. So we're just going to close out of this, close out of this. And then we're just going to leave this, close this. And it looks like everything looks like the downloading require files is complete, but we're not going to cancel. I think it does need to finalize the installation. So let's just give it a few extra moments until uh, let's just search RS links, see if we can run, run that. So it's not yet installed. So we're just going to wait a little bit. Let's see if this, yeah, this is not finalized yet. So we're just going to wait until this goes away. We're not going to click anything else. Yeah, so these are the files that are still being installed. I just wanted to essentially diminish that window. Let's let the installation process complete completely. And I'm going to get back to you as soon as it's done. All right, so the installation process has finally completed. We have RS Links Classic installed on this machine. I'm just going to uncheck this box of reviewing the release notes and click on finish. We should be okay with the entire installation procedure. Everything is good to go. The only thing that remains is if we go back to the downloads folder is going to be the RS Logix emulate. So I'm going to double click the folder. And of course, I'm going to click on this setup icon. And this is going to be the last tool, which we're going to be installing in this video. And we're going to do a quick check once we are complete with the installation, I'm going to hit next, accept next. Once you give again, give this some kind of a name, it's just pulling one of my email addresses that I used to check in, click on complete next, click on install. And we can actually close out of this classic installation and emulate is finally done. There's not a whole lot to it. Once again, it finishes very quickly. Click on finish and to double check that we've installed everything we needed. I will search for RS links. So it is there. I'm going to launch RS links. I'm going to also recommend that you pin this to your taskbar, pin to taskbar. I'm also going to launch RS Logix micro English. And last but not least, I'm going to launch RS Logix emulate. So I'm just going to search for RS Logix and then I'm going to scroll down to RS Logix emulate and click on this icon. And you will notice that sometimes there's this error which is going to be failed to update the system registry. That's fine. The software still runs just as usual. I'm not sure why that comes up, but I'm going to also pin to taskbar the emulate as well as RS Logix pin to taskbar. One thing I want to look at is RS Links Classic Lite. So here within the drivers, if I click this little icon, we will notice all the drivers. But I'm going to click on communication and configure one of the drivers, you will notice with a blank installation, you have no means of connecting to the emulator or a live PLC. So I'm going to add a new driver by selecting this little arrow key. And then selecting this SLC 500 emulate driver, which is what is going to allow you to practice on your machine without the requirements of hardware. I'm going to hit on add new and just keep the generic name. Click on OK. Give this station name is going to be zero. That's fine. And this is going to be our laptop or computer. Click on OK. And the other driver that I do want to add is going to be an Ethernet IP driver. 
Let's click on add new and this is going to be a B Ethernet IP one. That's perfectly fine. And this is going to browse through the controller, which we've set up not too long ago. So the IP address needs to match what we've set up. I'm going to hit OK. And those are going to be the two drivers which you can use in order to connect. So this one is going to be connecting to a live PLC. And as you can see, I already have a Micrologix 1100 series, which is sitting behind me and is connected to that computer. And in the emulator, you'll only notice your workstation. But let's quickly create a new program in order to see what that does. So here I'm going to switch to RS Logix Micro Starter Lite. I'm just going to create a new file. But by clicking on this new icon. And here you'll have only a couple of options, but essentially we're going to work with this 1100 series B Micrologix processor, and it's going to be a one. This is not extremely important. We're going to hit okay. And this is going to be a completely blank program. Now we need to establish how we go to that PLC. So I'm going to show you with the emulate. What you need to do is essentially verify this project and you need to save it in a location. So let's just save it on the in the documents folder. That's fine. Save. And this is going to be let's instead of untitled, we're going to call it Solus PLC. We're going to hit save. And from the emulate pane, we're going to open that same file. So as you can see, it's right there. Solus PLC station is going to be number one. It cannot be zero, which is going to be our computer. We're going to hit OK. And here I can click run. It is essentially running at, in an emulation file, but I can go back into, first of all, let's double check RS links. So if I go into RS links now, you'll notice that in my emulation driver, I now have this Micrologix untitled because I gave the project the, uh, the name Solus PLC, but the PLC itself still stayed untitled. That's not a problem though. If we go back into RS Logix, we can now click on this communications who active go online. And this should open up uh, the communications tab, which is similar to RS links, but essentially we need to go back into the emulator and station zero one is going to be our PLC. We can double check that by selecting it. And here we can click on OK. And now we are online with the PLC. As you can see, this iconic green bar is telling us that the PLC is in a remote run. And of course, we have the spinning icon as well, which tells us the exact same situation. So this is a complete guide on how to install the three softwares, um, download them originally from Rockwell Automation. And at this point, you're able to simulate logic so you can start editing these rungs. You can go back offline. So for example, go back offline and you can start programming XIC instructions, OTE instructions. You can also zoom in for convenience. But in any case, you can start practicing just like you would on a real PLC system. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.